Hi, I'm Stephen Price, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of what an equalizer is and what it can do. Today I'm using a Soundcraft LX7 mixing console to demonstrate, but the theory is the same with most consoles. An equalizer, often shortened to EQ, gives us a volume knob on different audible frequencies, so you can turn them up or down relative to the rest of your audio signal. On this desk, the EQ section of knobs is at the top of each channel strip, just under the gain knob. This varies between manufacturers as to where they place the equalization section of knobs. On Mackey consoles, they are at the bottom of the channel strips, just above the pan knob. To a lot of sound techs, the EQ is quite intimidating. Here we have six knobs on every channel dedicated to EQ. Four of these are the volume knobs for the frequencies and are marked with plus or minus values in decibels. So if the knob is sitting at 12 o'clock, we are not making any changes to that frequency relative to the rest of the audio signal. If we turn anti-clockwise, we are reducing the volume at that frequency and if we turn it clockwise, we are increasing the volume. You will no doubt notice the EQ section is laid out so that low frequency actions are at the bottom and high frequency actions are at the top. The other two knobs are the frequency selectors. Let me explain. For the two mid-range EQ sections on this desk, we can select what frequency we want the volume knob to work on. The bass or low frequency knob and the treble high frequency knob are fixed frequencies on most desks. If your console has variable frequency selection, you will find it in the mid-range frequencies. For those of us that are visual learners, here's a pretty wee graphic that shows what we are doing to the audio signal. The flat line represents our audio signal volume as it sits over the frequency graph from 0Hz to 20kHz, the audible range. If I grab the bass or low frequency knob, you will see that I'm boosting the volume of the lower frequencies by twiddling it to the right or clockwise, and then I can reduce it by twiddling it the other way. Why would I want to do that? Well, if your mix is sounding muddy, or it's hard to hear definition in your mix, it's probably because you have too many low frequency signals. It's common to cut out the low frequency on drum overheads, so that you don't get pickup from other stage noise or the kick drum coming through your overheads channels. You can use this knob to adjust that for the individual channel. Alternatively, if you have, say, a weak bass guitar on this channel, we can boost the lower frequencies to bring out how the instrument should sound. The same applies for the other frequencies. Again, I can grab the volume knob for, say, the low mids, and boost or cut the volume at those frequency. But here comes the cool bit. In the mid-range, because it is a variable frequency EQ, I can also move the frequency where I am boosting or cutting the signal level. The power of this is that I can find out, for instance, what frequency of voice sounds terrible in the mix, and reduce the volume of that frequency relative to the rest of the signal, making them sound better than they really are. The other equalization setting that is common to find on mixing desks is the low frequency cut button, this fella. What this does is it rolls off the low frequencies below a factory set frequency. This is helpful to eliminate noise from mic stands and reduce the impact of plosive sounds, the hard P's that speakers can have. Puh. It is not recommended for kick drums and bass guitars where you are wanting to preserve that low frequency noise. An equalizer is both a technical and a creative tool. It takes experimentation to get it right. Technical in that it allows us to eliminate the potential problems with our incoming signal, for example feedback that is kicking in at a particular frequency, and creative in that we can artfully boost or cut frequencies to bring out the best in our mix, so that everything can be heard in the best light relative to everything else. We will get into this more in an upcoming post on how to get the best sound from our input channels using EQ. That's all from me for now. Look out for more great tips and tutorials on sound.net.nz coming soon.